we're going to formalize the definition and the properties of limits. So our first slide here has a definition of limit where it states that the function f of x has a limit as x approaches c if and only if, that's what this symbol implies, that as I approach the value c from the right, that that limit is equal to the same limit as I approach the function c from the left. Now, last night we did some practice with this at a graphical look, and we've begun to look at this algebraically. Now, here are three examples that further expa explain this definition. So, if we look at the first example, f of x. Now, the, de the function f has a limit 2 as x approaches 1. So if we look from the left and the right, we are approaching the output of 2. However, notice that f of 1 is not defined for this function, the value, but yet the limit is 2. In the second example, g of x, we have a piecewise function here. And again, the function g has a limit 2 as x approaches 1. However, if you notice here, the, even though the limit I'm sorry, as x approaches c of the function g of x is equal to 2, if you look at the value when x is 1, the value is 1. So the value is different than the limit in this example. And our third example, as x approaches 1 from the left and the right, the limit is 2. The limit of h of x, oh, I'm sorry, the limit, oh, can I pick up my right here? Yeah, I can. Okay, the limit, oh, I changed colors. How'd that happen? As x approaches 1 of the h of x function is 2. And then you also notice the value when x is 1 is 2. So here are my three examples that illustrate this definition. Now, the properties. There are some simple properties here that you basically, you might not have the rules memorized and the notation memorized, but you're already using them. So the sum rule basically says that if you have the limit of the sum of two functions, that it is a sum of their limits. The difference rule says the same thing except with the word difference. The limit of the difference of two functions is equal to the limit, the difference of their limits. Oh, to also note here, you can check this out in chapter two, two, section one of your textbook. So you don't need to frantically copy every single word here. You just need to understand the gist of it. Product rule, again, the limit of the product of two functions is equal to the product of their limits. The constant multiply rule is if I have a constant, k, multiplied by a function, then the limit as x approaches c is equal to that constant times its limit. The quotient rule, the limit of the quotient of two functions, f of x and g of x, is equal to the quotient of their limits, l and m. And of course, m cannot equal zero because then it would be undefined. And the power rule. So if I have, the, if I have a limit as x approaches c of a function f of x and it's raised to a power, it will be equal to its limit raised to that same power. And the last property here stated at the bottom is just that if I have a limit as x approaches c of a constant, the solution, the limit will be that constant. Or if I have the limit as x approaches c of the function x, it will be that constant. So let's look at a couple examples when the limits are applied. And you're going to notice that you do these naturally. So our first example, the limit of the function 3x cubed plus 2x minus 9 as x approaches c. Well, first of all, I'm going to use my sum and difference rules. And I'm going to break it apart into pieces, 3x cubed, 2x, 9 and as x approaches c. And now we're going to use the product and the multiply rule, where you can see here that as since it's the function x, we replace x with c. The function 2x, we replace x with c. And any time a limit approaches a constant, it is just that constant. So there we have the limit of this function. Do you remember it now? Does it make sense? OK. Here's another one. Now we've been solving, not solving, I'm sorry, evaluating, finding limits of functions like this. So you can see graphically, as x approaches 0, what is the limit of this function? Well, graphically, it suggests and appears that the limit is 1 as x approaches 0. Now, we can confirm analytically 
by substituting the value 0 into the function. So as we can see here, it's a quotient of two functions. So if I take the limit of the numerator and divide it by the limit of the denominator, we know that the value of sine of 0 is 0. So we have 1 plus 0 in the numerator, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 over 1 is 1. So we have just verified our graphical um, limit, approach to the limit, with our algebra. Okay, here's one more example. Now, limit as x approaches 0 of 5 over x. We recognize this to be a rational function. And as I approach 0 from the left, we notice that we're approaching negative infinity. And as I approach 0 from the right, we're approaching positive infinity. We talked about this today in class. And graphically, we noticed that they are not approaching either a positive infinity or a negative infinity. So therefore, the limit then does not exist. Now, algebraically, what would we see happening? Well, if we try to substitute f of 0 into this problem, we notice that we get 5 divided by 0. So when this happens, we know that the limit will either be infinity or negative infinity or does not exist. And today, that's when we looked at numbers to the left and to the right of the constant, which is 0. So you can see here to the left, we have values here that are negative. So to the, if we have our constant, to the left we have negative values. And then we notice here, to the right, we have positive values. So as we approach the constant, our values are not the same sign. So therefore, the limit does not exist. And yes, I believe that is all. So you don't have to do the sandwich theorem. So um, make sure you complete your memory quiz topic sheet tonight, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.